Hello, uh, Nate Tucker here with another Understanding Meteor, the weird parts. Um, I'm going to be talking about Flow Router today, again. Oh. And, um, and what we're going to be going over is, is that Flow Router is inimpotent, um, which is not what you think. I guess mathematically that would mean if you operate, if you take itself and you operate on itself, you get yourself. Um, in this case, what, what idempotency means here is that if you, if you move from one route to the same route, you'll, you'll still keep that same uh, route. You won't re-render it. Um, we're going to just talk about how they implement that, why it's important, and we're going to be using query parameters in order to sort of display that. So I'm going to jump right in. The, the, the coding part of this is, is not that hard. We should be able to really uh, breeze through it very quickly. So let's sort of jump in. Um, the one thing that I did do here... Um, I went over to my publish, I removed the sleep, um, so you guys might remember what this basically does is it publishes a number, a single number, so I removed the sleep, and then I made it so that it can publish multiple numbers, okay, by giving them random IDs instead of the same ID. Not too important, just wanted to show you. Okay, so we want, we want a new route. Um, we're going to have it do the exact same thing as the previous route that we've made. So we've got our new page, and we want to be able to take these sort of parameters back here. So, grab a new page, post it right here. We want to be able to add in route parameters, so I'm going to call these params. The new page is going to be named new page with params. Great. It's going to do the exact same thing. Um, the only thing that will change right now is that... Um, our page over here won't be not found, but instead it will be, um, it will, it will actually be able to render. Uh, there's one more thing I want to do that will help us out a little bit later, and it will be this dot, uh, flow router, um, so I just want to show you guys this, just so you can sort of see. Hmm. Oh, yes. Uh, so... So you were able to sort of see that. So this dot flow router equals uh, flow router. Um, so I just want to expose flow router so that I can actually play with it in the console, and you'll you'll see why I want to do that in a little bit later. Okay. So the only thing this does is that says, "Hey, flow router, uh, a page that gets these random parameters up here, anything that params, display it like this. Uh, give it a name, which we'll talk about why we actually have names in this lesson." Um, and an action. So this is what's going to happen. Um, so we'll, we'll do the blaze layout, and I've gone over blaze layout before, so I won't sort of beleaguer you with this. Um, so let's go over and do stuff with this new page. I want to make a new um, params. I want to make a new helper function that is going to return these parameters. How you grab the parameters is you go flow router dot get param. You specify the param, what it's called. In this case, it's called params and you add a trailing comma because of Airbnb style guide. Um, so this will return the flow router parameters. The nice thing about this is all the params are reactive. Um, and I guess you would like to see that. I will prove it to you. So if I add params in here, you'll see that when I change the, um, uh, the URL, uh, these parameters will update reactively. Okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna reconnect. I'm gonna soothe my voice a little bit with some warm water. I don't know if you guys have ever tried just warm water before, but uh, it's truly amazing. Okay, so here we go. Um, we've, we've got new page and 33. This, this is actually what's, what's displayed in our route. And we go ahead and we display 33 right here. Um, and so what, what happens if I were to put in 34? Oh, one thing that's a little bit confusing with this is that the page re-renders. It completely re-renders when, when I put in 34 and I, and I hit enter. And this, this is sort of the browser's problem. This is not Meteor's problem. Um, if Meteor has a say in what it's going to do, then it will do slightly different things. So there's a couple of ways to change this. You can go ahead and, as you know, I exposed flow router over here. Um, so I can go flow router dot set params, in this case, which will set params, 
and I can go into params, and I want those params to equal 42 instead of 33 or 34. Um, if I do this, you'll notice, it, it almost instantaneously changed here, you'll notice that we get 42 instead. It reactively updates, and the page didn't have to reload. Uh, this is kind of like the magical point. The page doesn't have to reload. This saves you so much. Um, this, this is the point. This is why I love Kidera. It's because so much latency is going to be saved. These apps are going to feel lightning fast um, because it's making all the smart choices. Um, if you're rerouting to the same route, it's, gonna, it's not going to load. It's not going to uh, refresh for more data. It's not going to resubscribe to stuff. And I'll show you that um, in one second. Now, before I move on, I want to go ahead and, and talk about query parameters because you might be a little bit curious about this sort of stuff. Um, so, um, uh, so if we go ahead and we put in some query, uh, query parameters and what I've done before is I put in hello 66, um, this, this won't do anything, right? This, this won't confuse the router at all. The router will parse these and will allow you to use another reactive function in order to display them. And the reactive function is, uh, as you, as you probably guessed it, flow router dot get query param and you specify the query param that you want. In our case, it's hello. And we get back 66. Um, I, I just wanted to alert you to this. I don't, I don't think you should use it unless you have a previous API that you need to conform to or you, you would like to use sort of like old syntax into, into registering for these types of things. Meteor doesn't use get requests. It doesn't use a RESTful API. Query params are kind of outdated in Meteor's fashion. The reason you'd use them is because you're trying to conform to an old API. So don't use them. Um, you, you can't specify what your query params are in, in the flow router route. Uh, so for people reading your code for the first time, they, they won't know whether this accepts any parameters. You'll need to sort of go around and do special things. And I'll talk about it in, in a little bit. Um, Probably, probably in the ne in the next video about what what we could do to make this all a little bit more self-evident. Um, because again, this this params here is specified as a string. No one knows where that's from or why it's there. And if you're trying to go to this route and navigate to it, you'll need to go and refer back to this page in order to understand. You can't import these params or anything. So I want to I want to sort of show you what these params are, are naturally used for. Um, almost always. Eh, it's rare that you'd want to display these params themselves in the, in the page. Instead, these params are generally used for displaying content. Um, and how do you get content in Meteor? You subscribe to it. So in our case, instead of subscribing to uh, four as, as just the numbers up here, we can go ahead and subscribe to a uh, number. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but back here, 66 is actually a string, so we need to cast this to be a number. Flow router dot get param and we want to get the param params. Yeah, that looks good. So this is reactive, once again. So if you put it in this auto run, and I'll, I'll go over auto runs probably a, a much later. This is, this is very technical stuff, uh, but I'm sure that you guys are very interested in it. Um, so because this, this is reactive and we put it inside an auto run, this auto one will get run every time that uh, uh, this reactive data source invalidates itself. Um, and it invalidates itself every time this changes in the, in the route. Um, and you'll be able to see this. So I kind of want to show you. Um, so if we go to counts.find.fetch, we'll look that this is 42. And remember, this was just four before. So we've already subscribed to 42. Now what if we go ahead and set our param instead of 42 to 43? What do you think will happen? we reactively resubscribe to more data. So we not only have 42 and 43. Uh, why do we get 42 and 43 is, is a slight question you might want to ask. Well, here we're using a uh, subs manager. So this, this caches subscriptions locally. So you need to be careful with this. If you're going to display all the data that you've subscribed to and this sort of blast to the user and you want to make it more specific, Right, so you've got this URL parameter that's like user ID, and you want to just display this user's stuff and not all the user's stuff. You need to not only subscribe correctly up here with the subs manager, but you also need to display only the data with that user's ID uh, in the helper functions later on. Uh, so, so be careful with that sort of stuff. 
Um, but notice it's reactive. It's reactive. The URL changed up here. The page did not reload. Instead, we only fetched the data that we just needed uh, from the server. We presented that data to us, and we only updated the parts of the page that really needed it, um, which, is, which is beautiful. There's one more thing that I wanted to show you, um, which is if we, if we go up here and we say 45, it's going to refresh the page, um, which, which is unfortunate. When we refresh the page, um, we, we, I mean, we didn't store any of the collection data in, in browser storage, browser local storage. So it's just going to have that one thing there. Um, so set parameters works. If you, if you're curious, go works as well. So if you use flow router go, um, we pass in the route, whatever it's called, a page with, uh, params, um, 43, there you go. It worked just fine. Didn't have to reload the entire page. Um, and this, this is just, this is just simply awesome. This, this is going to save you so much latency. It's going to, it's going to be beautiful to your customers uh, or users. Um, so this, this is what idempotency means in, in Flow Router's case. This is why Flow Router is great. Um, this is why uh, this is why you want to use Flow Router instead of Iron Router. Um, so you might be asking, how, how does it do this? And uh, that's a great question. So, so I went ahead and I did a little bit of, of snooping. Um, I did want to show you there is a method that allows you to reload the entire page, the flow router dot reload. Uh, this means it will reload as if, um, as if you actually need it to, uh, as if you just click the reload button on the browser. If you, if you need to reload the route, you almost never want to use this. Um, so I snooped in the flow router code. Um, we want to look at the client code. We're not doing server stuff. We've got some init's, some groups, some modules, some triggers, some route and router. We're going to look at init, uh, modules, route and router. First off is init. Uh, we make a new router. Uh, we uh, give it access to router and route. Um, kind of silly. And then we initialize it. Okay. So what happens in initialize? So down here we look at initialize. So the first thing it does is it updates callbacks. Um, so what does update callback do? Um, the update callback in this case, it basically goes through all of the um, all of the routes that you've currently configured. Um, it sets their action to be a specific thing. In this case, it sets the action to be the before trigger, the action. And then it sets its own after action to be a specific thing, which is the after action trigger. Um, so it's, it's extremely simple. Um, so it just goes through all the routes that it set, redoes that. Um, and how does it set these things to happen? Uh, it actually doesn't do anything too complex. It calls another thing called page. Um, so uh, let's see here. So this, this might look a little bit um, familiar. So uh, page is an NPM package. It is an express inspired client side route and it's a tiny client side router. What it does is it parses the URL and it does actions. So this URL, this action, this URL, this action. Um, what it also has is a little bit more functionality with the, um, the page.exit, I believe. Um, yes, page.exit. So once you're exiting a page, um, it can also I issue a callback. So, so if you're ever actually working on, um, if you're actually, actually using those triggers inside flow router, the on exit, uh, that's, what's being called. It's, it's calling this, this page functions, this, this, uh, very tiny client side routers functions logic. Um, if you use the on before it kind of does a little bit of, of funky stuff. It makes a new function. It sticks the on before at the top of the function and it sticks the action, whatever this, uh, this action right here, uh, at the bottom of the function, it passes that to page. Um, super simple. How does it implement it in potency? You're probably going to be extremely disappointed at this, but here it is. Um, 
So it takes the show and it takes the replace um, methods uh, from page and it replaces them. And what does it replace them with? Um, it replaces them with a simple function that will um, that will reload some environment variables. Okay, so this this is going to be uh, the um, uh, the URL, uh, just reparsing that sort of stuff. If you're not reloading, and the current path equals the path that you're going to, don't don't do anything. Don't render this page. That's it. It's super simple. Um, there's there's not a lot of magic here, uh, which is which is nice when you sort of drill down into the actual code. Um, and if you look into the code itself, I think it's only like 300 lines of code for, for the entirety of Flow Router, and it's, it's pretty easy to understand. I wish there were more comments. Um, um, but, but yeah, I hope that, I hope that kind of dis, uh, demystifies a little bit of Flow Router for you. you know, Flow Router is great. It's idempotent. Um, I love using it with the subscriptions manager because that makes collections almost idempotent in themselves. Um, this means you're only going to be having to do like a few data fetches on the first loads of pages, um, and then navigating intra-page is super simple. Um, you you almost never have to reload layouts and stuff like that. Um, okay, so so that's 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 pretty much it. I, I hope you guys sort of enjoyed this. Uh, please leave any comments or questions at the end of the video. Um, uh, if you guys want, I can go ahead and, and look through this page package. Um, this is going to be using a lot of node commands and stuff like that, uh, which I'm not sure that you guys are sort of interested in. Um, and if you'd like, I can also go through the, the rest of the flow router stuff. I, I had looked through this. It's, it's not too complex. Um, okay. Uh, thanks for your times. Um, I, I hope this is, is, is very helpful for you. This will allow you to, to use flow router really as it's meant to be used, not be confused by it, not say that it's magical because it's not. Um, uh, remember, use, use template level subscriptions is, is one thing that I would, I would really like to stress out of this entire thing. Be careful with reactive data stores. Um, and I'll go ahead and I'll do a, a full video on how to sort of incorporate all of these things together into how do I make a route and why do I make it in this specific way. Um, I know this is a lot of details, but I mean, this is understanding media of the weird parts. Um, thanks. Always a pleasure. Never a chore.